And I know a lot of Christians say, well, maybe we could just inject millions of years yes. into the creation account. Could you speak briefly on that? Well, you see, that injection simply doesn't work. And, um, you know, our friend Mike Riddle has talked about this a lot, and I, I was influenced by him in what, in what I put in the book. He often refers to magic words. You know how a magic word is a, in a fairy tale is a word you speak that makes something that should be impossible becomes possible. possible. Well, evolutionists have that. There are things that are impossible that we know couldn't happen, but they say, well, if you give it millions of years, it is possible. Their magic word is millions of years, and you see this throughout. Uh, uh, it's, it's a question of language. You can spot it easily. Something impossible is made possible simply by the addition of millions of years. Now, Christians don't need to buy into that because we have the word of God, which, as you say, is a true foundation. That is the truth. Well, let's talk a little bit about how stories get changed, about how assumptions are added within the scientific community. Yes. Um, again, it's worth having a look at some of the examples of how they, how they, how they do these things. One example that sprang to mind is uh, um, they had a picture of a large animal called an Andrusarchus. Okay. This is a fascinating creature, and they show the picture of the animal. It's a huge animal yeah. uh, looking like a wolf with spots on it. Wow. And uh, they claim it's the largest meat-eating mammal that there's ever been. And it's ferocious. Looks mm. ferocious, yes. Um, interestingly enough, that picture is so slightly different from many of the pictures I've seen because one of the points that they make about it is they say it's not related to the wolf. Oh. They say, what is it related to? They say it's related to sheep and goats. Really? And then they describe it as being a sheep in wolf's clothing. Huh. Okay, now... This, this is odd because you can see that phrase is a biblical phrase deliberately twisted. So you see again there how they're using their language. They want to twist the, uh, uh, the language. But where did they get that idea from? Well, they started with this creature being by the sea, eating turtles, and said it's been driven to the sea. It normally lives inland, and it's been driven to the sea. And you have to start to think, what evidence have they got of that? And the right. answer is none. They've got no fossil, uh, fossil evidence. None, none of the fossils are found in a way that would suggest that they've been driven to the sea. So it's basically to do with their belief in evolution. Okay. And you start to think, what do they think evolved from this creature? Because clearly what they're saying is something's going to happen to it. And the the fact they've mentioned the sea is important. And basically, to cut a long story short, they eventually show this animal, they say, has evolved into a whale. Really? So they, a whale has therefore evolved from creatures similar to goats and sheep. And you start to think, well, hold on, they're not the same. And then why would they even think that this animal anyway is related to a goat? Yeah. And you start to think, what's the fossil evidence they've got for it? Well, they do have a fossil. Okay. But you look at the fossil, and all they have is an upper jaw. You're talking about an animal supposedly related evolutionarily to a whale yes. and sheep and goats, yet it looks like a wolf, and yet it's based on one jaw. Yes, uh, its upper jaw looks like a wolf, but they say that, uh, that it looks similar to a goat's upper jaw. And for that reason, they say it has hooves. So they don't really have any forms leading up to, uh, from evolution in the past leading up to this animal, nor do they have the forms leading onwards to the whale. But you see how this fits with their story. Yes. And that's the important point. There is a story, there is a meta-narrative and everything has to fit their meta-narrative. And we need to cut across that and call them out on it, call their bluff and say, this is not the case. Right. I'm sure there was this animal there. This jaw is clearly a genuine jaw. What the rest of the animal looked like, I don't know. We could easily make our own guesses. But there's clearly real science there in the sense that there was this animal there. But the rest of it is all a story, and we need to call them out on that.